Hi friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna do another fun color with me, so grab your coloring books and let's get started. This color with me is a medium between the first two. I recorded this video with the time-lapse feature on the iPhone as usual for over six hours, and then I slowed it down to about five minutes. In the comment section below, let me know if you prefer the longer version, the medium version, or the shorter uh, version videos, which you can check out um, on uh, my YouTube channel. As always, I'll post the completed versions of the pages we color together on the Reading on the Run blog. As an avid reader of the Reading on the Run blog, uh, you, my dear friend, may already know uh, I love reading personal accounts uh, by people from worlds that I know very little about. Uh, so this book was a perfect fit. Uh, My Spiritual Journey by the 14th Dalai Lama is a personal account of his childhood memories, a journey as a monk leading up to becoming the Dalai Lama, as well as uh, his hopes for humanity in Tibet overall. Um, it is beautifully written in translation with uh, a co-author, Sophia Shrill Reaver. Um, and one of my favorite pieces in the book discusses compassion and love as the basic human need uh, from conception throughout life. Uh, it proposes altruism as the solution to this need, um, and it is, this uh, argument is certainly something to consider during the trying times that our world is going through right now. And Wikipedia defines altruism as the principle and moral practice of selflessness um, the concern for happiness uh, in others and for the well-being of others. Um, and simply put, just doing things for other people uh, is more valuable than your selfish pursuits. Um, and the Dalai Lama puts it in a way, and I quote, uh, by accustoming your mind to a universal altruism, you will uh, develop a feeling of responsibility for others and the wish to help them overcome their suffering effectively. Now I must confess, throughout this book, I depended on Google to fill the gaps in my knowledge. Before parting the pages, I researched Tibet, which is an autonomous region within China. Uh, monk, uh, a member of a religious community of men, typically under uh, vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, um, and Buddhism, which is a faith that was founded uh, 25 years ago in India. The Dalai Lama is a Tibetan spiritual and political figure, uh, a position rather than a specific person, if you will. Uh, in Tibetan culture, this figure provides spiritual guidance in the faith of Buddhism and lives um, uh, as a monk once he's appointed. Uh, this book is written by the most recent monk holding the position, making him the 14th Dalai Lama, and he was appointed February 22nd, 1940. The people of the Buddhist faith believe that the Dalai Lama is reincarnated upon death. Therefore, the same soul or spirit has lived in all of the 14 men holding this position. Reading this book, I've learned that the history surrounding uh, this topic is extensively complex, uh, inclusive of how uh, these faiths have affected the relationship of Tibet and China. The 14th Dalai Lama explains how the 13th Dalai Lama uh, chose not to appoint his successor before passing away. Therefore, the believers were forced to search the community for where the soul had gone. Um, and so there's a whole system outlined in the book about how they approach finding uh, where the spirit has gone and who would be the next Dalai Lama. And so the uh, now 14th Dalai Lama uh, was instinctively able to identify with the possessions of the recently passed 13th Dalai Lama as a child, which qualified him for the position. Um, after other testing and evaluation, he was appointed uh, the uh, 14th Dalai Lama um, and was taken to the palace to begin studying. Um, he describes his current schedule uh, today as you know meditation and meetings and laughter more meditation uh, and more meetings and more laughter. Um, and apparently as a child, he was a prankster and enjoyed playing with the palace staff instead of actually studying his books. This particular book begins with the 14th Dalai Lama summarizing his life's commitments. Um, and I will uh, quote 
the three commitments that he outlined in the book as follows. My first commitment in life as a human being is the promotion of human values and those qualities of spirit that are key elements in happy life, whether of an individual, a family, or a community. My second commitment in life as a Buddhist monk is the promotion of harmony among the different religions. My third commitment in life as the Dalai Lama is to call is to the cause of Tibet, which concerns me very particularly. So therefore, the book is broken up into these three kind of life commitments um, outlined as themes, um, and then it's stretched over eight chapters, and it has a forward and an afterward. The forward is written by the co-author, uh, who is an interpreter for the Dalai Lama on a daily basis. Um, so the um, book is translated to English from Sanskrit. I gathered that this Dalai Lama is a bit unconventional in the way that he interacts with the world, other world leaders, and through mainstream media. Um, his unconventional methods also extend to uh, considering appointing a woman as the next Dalai Lama before he passes away, which is effectively unheard of in the culture. This read is enjoyable, light, and informative. Um, the chapters are short, well-written, and easy to digest. Uh, it was most interesting learning about the process of finding the next Dalai Lama once the previous one had passed away. Um, and I particularly fancied uh, the sense of humor, uh, humility, and warmth um, of the Dalai Lama. So um, I would recommend this book uh, if you're interested in just learning something new. Uh, Thank you for uh, watching my channel. I'll catch you guys next time.